Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's much-discussed Just Energy Transition received a boost this week with confirmation of a $497 million World Bank loan. Terence Creamer joins me to speak about the development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this financing package? Well, the background is really the, the new board, which is no longer the new board at Eskom 2018, uh, and the new leadership team there started to look at this fleet of old power stations that are up for decommissioning and to see whether there wasn't uh, an option given the electricity crisis we're in, but also the gap that this was going to leave socially to try and repower and repurpose these sites. And basically over the last few years, um, there's been work behind the scenes. And we know at COP26 last year in Glasgow, Scotland, South Africa used that uh, as a way to get a, a partnership agreement with a number of developed countries, which hasn't been materialized yet in terms of financing, but uh, basically $8.5 billion worth of a partnership offer to support South Africa's just transition, including this aspect of repowering and repurposing. So there's been a lot of work uh, from Eskom and a lot of work in the civil society um, led really by the Presidential Climate Commission, which took up the mantle from the previous National Development Commission, which had done some work on the just energy transition as well. And uh, that uh, went through to a framework that has basically been endorsed by Cabinet in the last month or so. And so th there's been a build up to getting ready to take on some financing for these projects. And of course, Gamati was identified as the flagship site, mostly because its last unit was going to be decommissioned earliest. And that happened this week on the 30 31st of October, midday, unit nine at Gamati was decommissioned for the last, or shut down for the last time. And now we're moving into a repurposing and repowering of that site. So it's not a decommissioning, it's really a, it's a retirement of the coal aspect. But we're now going to be setting, using that site to still as an energy production hub. Uh, this time it's going to take the form of renewable energy mainly, supported by battery energy storage. What are the main elements of the project? So as I said, on the repowering side, it's very much about bringing in renewable uh, energy, quite a large portion of solar, about 150 megawatts, uh, about 20 megawatts of, of or more of wind uh, capacity that could come on to that site or in and around that site, which is in Mpumalanga, and then the battery en energy storage of about 150 megawatts. So quite significant on the renewable. It's not going to obviously close the, the gap in load shedding, which we know is very really intensified uh, in South Africa this year. But Kumati itself, before this unit was closed, was only contributing about 150 megawatts into the grid, definitely below 200 megawatts. And now that unit finally has been closed. And uh, we'll look at using that site, or they will look at using the site, uh, also for uh, community-related elements. The just transition is the most tricky part um, of this transition. We know that there's grid infrastructure that those assets can be sweated, but there's a community and an ecosystem around these coal-fired power stations, including Kamati, uh, that is vulnerable uh, to this transition taking place. So other than the repowering elements that will absorb some of the jobs, there's also a plan to uh, use the facilities as a factory to build microgrids and these microgrids are just containerized solar battery systems that then can be put into far-flung areas off the grid in South Africa and into Africa. So there's that already underway. There will also be, there's very good training facilities at, at all these power stations and Kamati is no exception. And there's a signing of an agreement with training providers between, uh, with Eskom to set up a fairly large training facility that's going to, it looks like, be very much geared towards renewable energy training for those sort of jobs. But in and around these power stations, there's also opportunity for agriculture and other types of projects. So these just elements is where the, the grant funding, which is a small portion of the World Bank loan, which uh, uh, overall uh, has support from just not the, just the World Bank, but, but the Canadians as well. Um, it has some grant financing, which I imagine will go 
more directed towards these training skills upliftment projects, the potential community agricultural type projects that are more job intensive um, but are not necessarily linked to the power sector. So it, we'll have to see but there's, there is a sort of a plan and an investment strategy both for the repowering element which I think is pretty clear and makes sense in terms of the grid infrastructure that remains behind and utilizing that to the max because we know that's the biggest gap in terms of adding new capacity and then the, the non uh, electricity elements are the more difficult but the very important for these communities and these workers that can't be absorbed into the, the power sector. Is this the start of a funding trend for South Africa? Well, that's going to be very interesting to see. As I mentioned earlier, we signed that partnership agreement with a number of developed countries all the way back in November 2021. Uh, it's now the end of 2022 and COP 27 takes place in Egypt next week. And the ant expectation is that th there'll be an announcement of how the financing is going to now be implemented or integrated into this Just Energy Transition Partnership with an investment plan that's been worked out over the last year. And that uh, investment plan hasn't been revealed to the South African public, but we know it includes the sort of element of Kamati and the, and the other power stations that are to follow there's a number of power stations that will be closed between now and 2030 and even more post-2030. There'll be a lot of uh, closure of, of coal capacity. So this will be the, f the flagship in terms of that, but it will be broader than just uh, the financing for Kamati. And uh, it will be bigger. It will be $8.5 billion. So, so, so it's, like a, it's, a, it's really quite significant in terms of uh, concessional finance. But it's not big in terms of South Africa's energy need, transition needs. In fact, the World Bank brought out a report this week that shows that between now and 2050, South Africa will need to spend 8.5 trillion rand on the uh, energy transition. So this is an important start, but uh, it's not nearly enough for what we need. So I think more financing is going to be required and from external resources because, as the World Bank report also states, is that it, uh, we don't have enough savings in our own system and our domestic resources, we're going to have to leverage in uh, international finance, hopefully on concessional terms. And, in, and a portion of that will be grant finance, which is going to be very important for financing the just uh, element to the transition. Thank you. That's the second tech show for today. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.